In this video, I wanna show you how to get the most out of the Fruity Delay 3 plugin. What's up my producer friends, I'm David with anothermonsterproductions.com. In this tutorial, I wanna show you the key features of the Fruity Delay 3, and I wanna show you a couple examples of how you can use this plugin and get the most out of it. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so I have a dry vocal here. This is an acapella from one of the artists I used to work with, and I've got it linked up in my mixer. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a Fruity Delay 3 onto it and I'm gonna show you some of the key features that this plugin has. So this delay plugin is actually really amazing. There's a lot of really cool features in it, and we're gonna get into all that in a little bit, but there's a couple things that you really need to know about right off the bat. And so the first thing that I wanna change is the delay model. Now this delay does have some pretty cool options here, but generally I'm gonna go for the ping pong delay, which is you know what I want for a vocal performance, something like that. And in order to actually get the left right ping pong effect, we need to change the panning. So this controls the amount of of the panning. So if I go all the way like this, it's gonna be really hard right, left. So let's take a listen to that. And then I can change the amount here. So you can hear how it's it's not quite as left and right there. And if I had it in the middle, then it would just be centered. Now we can also potentially change the time over here. So this is gonna control uh, how quickly the delay happens. And then the next thing that I would probably mess with is the tone option here. So this is one of my favorite features of this delay is the ability to have sort of a built-in low pass, high pass filter that you can adjust really quickly and easily just with this single tone knob. So if I go like this, it's gonna create basically a high pass filter. So let's take a listen to this. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is adjust the wet volume output in order to kind of control how loud the delay actually is. So if I bring this about halfway, so that feels like a little bit better volume there. And obviously this is ultimately gonna depend pretty heavily on what it sounds like in relation to the rest of the track with all the instruments and everything. And so for most instances, and especially for vocals and stuff like that, those knobs that I just showed you are going to be pretty much the main things that I am messing with within this delay plugin. However, there are a couple other things we can do to even get a more unique sound. So for example, in the diffusion section, if we bring these up, it creates creates more of like almost like a reverb sound where it diffuses the delay. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. So you can kind of hear what's happening there. It's really like spreading out the delay. So that can be something to mess with. Another really cool feature of this delay is that we have a sample rate and a bit crushing effect. So I can bring this down and start to incorporate a sample rate uh, reduction effect. So let's listen to that. I'm gonna bring the tone back up just so we can hear this a little bit better. And of course you can automate any of these knobs, which is always really cool. Uh, let's take a listen to what the bit crushing effect sounds like. Now, another way you can mess with this potentially is I could turn the dry all the way down. And it's kind of a little weird, but I could potentially turn the level down as well. So this controls how many delay tails we actually have. So like how long the delay is going to keep on going. So I could bring this all the way down to 0% and it's only gonna have like one delay. And then what I can do is add one of these effects on it or multiple effects on it. And essentially I'm just adding the effects onto that one delay tail. So it's gonna be a little bit weird because if you're looking at the waveform, the audio is actually happening afterwards because it's actually the first delay tail, which is what we're affecting in the signal in this case. So, but just kind of a cool effect and something to keep in mind that you could potentially mess with if you wanted to. And another really cool feature of this plugin is that the level actually goes up past 100%. So I can go up here, this is 100%, and then once it starts turning redder, we're going above 100%, goes all the way up to 125%. And what this actually means is that the volume is gonna to continue to get louder and louder as the delay tails keep going, so. So again, keep in mind, you can automate this. So there's definitely some really cool uses that you can come up with 
using that in your tracks. And just to touch on the rest of the feedback section, so this is a filter option that here that we have. Um, of course, you have your cutoff, your resonance, and then your different types of filters. So this is standard in terms of how filters work. I pretty much never use these because I just use the tone knob instead. As I mentioned earlier, you can do these effects, the stereo and the mono as well. Done it. Done it. Done it. So you may or may not have noticed, but when I switched to stereo, this changed to offset instead of panning. So this controls the offset there. So it's kind of an interesting effect that you can get there. And then also we have the mono. So it's just kind of a different level of offset there that the, than the stereo offers. So one last feature that I want to mention before we wrap up the tutorial, and that is that the time knob, can you can get some pretty crazy stuff as long as you have these settings selected, the keep tempo and the keep pitch off. Um, and we can bring up the level so that it's kind of above 100% and I can just kind of play something. Dun, dun. Anyway, you get the idea. You can get some pretty cool effects by messing with the time knob, the level, the tone, and some other different parameters within this plugin. I did do a walkthrough tutorial of this entire plugin a while back, and I know there are a couple of things that I didn't really touch on or talk about in this tutorial. So if you wanna learn about those, uh, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description as well as something will pop up on the screen now. You can check out that tutorial if you're interested. Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you're struggling with anything production related or if you're just starting out with production and you want some one-on-one -on -one private lessons. I do offer that on my website. So you can sign up for that there. Check that out if you're interested and I will see you in the next video.